Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you my Game 2 from the War of the Ring 2022 tournament. So I am playing Backdrifts again, I am playing Shadow this game, and they are playing Free People. We are giving Free People two action tokens because that's what we did last game. And you can see that I started off with Monsters Roused and on on they went. Not particularly amazing cards to start with Shadow, but not horrible. And my opponent gets Scouts. Obviously, that's a great... I really like having an early Scouts. But you see they do not get any army movement unless they use a Will of the West. Though, overall, these are nice rolls. I allocated one eye. I got three nice musters early on. And so that is looking good for me. I'm probably going to muster Isengard, get Saruman, muster Sauron. And then with these two character dice, I can land on Old Forest Road before my opponent has a chance to get any northern unit there. I expect them to move twice, maybe cycle a card with Gandalf if they have a card to play, but they actually don't have any playable card. So I guess they could separate Strider early on, but yeah, with Gua here, but I think it makes sense not to do that. So I muster Isengard, and then I go ahead and draw a strategy card. I think in general, early strategy cards before the fellowship is revealed you can draw into a bunch of useful things early on corsairs of umbar new powers rising rage of the dundlandings isn't bad it makes me feel like i can either group up these units in and attack lorian early on for moria or maybe i can go up to rivendell so so we'll see I'm, I, I don't mind seeing rage of the dundlandings it's a way that you can move armies with a mustard eye if you end up rolling a whole bunch of mustard dice Okay, my opponent has to draw a card. Obviously, that's not great for them. They thought about using the action token, but I think it makes more sense to wait. And then I go ahead and get Sauron to war. They move once and are safe, which makes sense only against one die. And then they move a second time, and this time I hit them, but I don't reveal them. And obviously a two is a great die, is a great tile to lose Gandalf to. And so Gandalf goes bye-bye and Strider is guide. And I think this is a perfectly nice start for free people, particularly if they manage to roll the Will of the West. And I'm happy with my start also. I think this is a pretty even start. I get my army into Old Forest Road. I'm prepared to besiege Woodland Realm, etc. Okay, I get Saruman, obviously. Okay, we go to round two. My opponent draws Celeborn's Galadrim. Obviously, that's a great card. And um, I just allocate one eye. I obviously want to catch them in Moria, but I want to continue my military progress even more. So I only allocate one eye, but then I roll three more and I don't get any musters. Obviously it would have been nice to get some musters here to be able to, you know, I could, my plan actually was to muster once or twice in, in uh, Isengard and then play my Rage of the Dunlandings to get to Rivendell. And then I could have a pretty big force outside of Rivendell, a big enough force outside of Woodland Realm, and I could take two Elven Strongholds pretty early on. So that was that was sort of my plan. With this, I don't have any musters. I can't really launch my Rage of the Dunlandings attack. So I, um, let's see, my opponent plays Caliborn's Galadrim. That makes sense. And then they draw Kindled of Glorfindel. And then I go ahead and start moving armies because I feel like while I want to get that Elven plan going, I can't really do it yet, and therefore I might as well try and pick another target, and I, and I pick Gondor because, you know, I do have a lot of units here, so I might as well try for it. So my opponent gets Gandalf. Obviously, it's great to get a turn to Gandalf as free people, and then I move my armies along. I don't have Corsairs of Umbar. You know, obviously, I'd like to draw it at some point, but I need a whole bunch of musters for the Southrons and Easterlings, and I need to draw the card for that even to be useful. So I move to Westerondor with the idea that maybe I'll get them to war and they can take Pilar gear or support attack and attack into Gondor. My opponent plays only a regular unit into um, Rivendell, which, you know, I, I guess that makes sense. They're a little worried about the Elven force pool being too low. Um, I don't know. Does Is it really bad to get an elite there? I guess if you draw into Corsairs of Umbar, it's nice to be able to defend Umbar if you see that um, Shadow is attacking Gondor. So yeah, maybe, maybe it makes sense to get a regular there. For me, as Shadow, I'm happy to see that regular in there. I feel like eventually I can still go Rage of the Dundlings. I did get Monsters Roused also, so if I ever get a whole bunch of Palantir dice, I can do Monsters Roused, Rage of the Dundlings, and I can get a pretty big army outside of Rivendell pretty fast. 
okay. Um, I just confirmed that they only wanted to put a regular, and then I move my army to North Athelion, hoping that they manage to attack Gondor before their Corsairs, I mean, before there's Faramir's Rangers. And then they use the die, uh, sorry, the action token to uh, make a political action and muster Gondor one towards war. So that now, if I attack as Gilead, that puts Gondor towards war, and at the start of next round, they will be able to muster into Minas Tirith before I besiege it. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty big, good use, and I have four eyes right here, so if I have some nasty thing to play on them with my character die, they are going to have the last action of the round. So I think this is a good sort of dual purpose here. And it just shows how the action tokens really help to balance the game. Okay, so... I go ahead and play Anand. They went here because I don't want to attack into Gondor when I'm not ready yet. And, um, you know, I had five cards in hand, so this is slightly more efficient. I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to, to just go ahead and attack into Gondor. Um, yeah, I don't know. That This is this is an interesting question. Do you just attack into Gondor anyway? But... I don't really care about Worm Tongue, so if I have to discard it, it's fine. I don't know. I um, I play it, and then I miss on this hunt. Obviously, with four eyes on the third movement, with better than you know normal chances of revealing, if I managed to hit them, that would have been a really nice time to hit the Fellowship, but I don't, so I'm sad, but that's how it goes. Okay, um, my opponent... Uh, gets, let's see, the last battle. Daylight is obviously a powerful effect and mighty attack. Um, sorry, axe and bow. And I get um, dreadful spells, devil before think it's fine. Um, and deadly strife. Obviously, that's great. And then if I want to get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war and play a horde from the east, this is this is a very flexible card. Now, I don't have the South Rounds and Easterlings at war yet, so we'll see. If I get a bunch of musters, then I can get them to war. All right, I allocate one eye and I roll two more and no character dice, but plenty of musters so I can do what I need to do here. Um, my opponent gets a nice flexible roll as well and they start by playing Grimbjorn. I'm not exactly sure why that was a priority. Um, I might have been inclined to pass once and then maybe um, just move the move the fellowship. Um, I also noticed that with Gua here, level four plus three, I'm getting close to being able to get Strider straight to Dol Amroth. Um, I, yeah, it's not, maybe it's not quite time and maybe just move the fellowship a little bit more, but yeah, I don't, I don't love this use of this card, I, I don't know that there's anything vitally important to do, but um, I probably would rather play the Red Arrow and save Grimbjorn. I can't play the Red Arrow yet because Gondor is not active yet, but I sort of expect that Gondor's getting attacked, the Witch King's coming into play, and um, and then I'll get to do it. So why not move the Fellowship once, particularly because there's no Shadow has no character dice. So it's not like they can do anything particularly nasty if I get revealed. So I would probably move first here as free people. Okay, but I'm happy to see scouts go away. I don't really care about Grimbjorn that much, so that's fine for me. And then I muster up or think a little bit. I, I think, so this was an example of me not planning out my turn well enough. Um... I, I thought that what I was going to do was muster up Isengard, maybe muster once in Moria, and then, I don't know, maybe play Monsters Roused and, and just move my army, my units to Trollshars, um, and then be prepared to attack Rivendell. But I don't actually have enough dice to do that and get the Witch King, and I kind of want the Witch King. So... This muster ended up being, I don't know, it's okay. I, I want to do that eventually, but maybe I'll draw into um, A New Power is Rising. And if I'm not ready to do that right away, why why do that? It might be better to get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war here. So, and I do have, I do have Horde from the East. So I could have 
you know, mustered a couple times and then attacked in, gotten Minas Tirith under siege, and then gotten the Witch King, but then also had the Southrons and Easterlings to war. So I, I would be curious, what would you do, you know, turn three? Um, this is like minute 10, so I'll make a note to myself. Um, what would you do with this turn as Shadow? You have five dice that are quite flexible. No character dice, but very flexible dice. What would you do? Okay, I ended up mustering Isengard once. My opponent now moves. I miss again, which is sad. And then um, I go ahead and attack as Gilead here because I know that I want to get the Witch King. I'm not sure what else I want to do. So I get one hit. They retreat into Pilar gear and they muster into Minas Tirith and I put it under siege. These are all pretty forced moves. And then they muster into Dol Amroth, also good. I get the Witch King and then um, now they play scouts here. And I guess that makes sense. You don't want to get caught going through Moria against three dice. I, I might have moved here, maybe. Um, but obviously getting getting um, a, a leader and an elite in Edoras so that then you can get them into Westamnet before Shadow comes attacking into Helm's Deep is, is good. So... That's a great card. I, I like the red arrow. And also Rohan gets mustered one towards war. Okay. And now I play monsters roused here. I, again, I just, I think I hadn't fully planned out my turn. I didn't want to waste a card. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I should have just attacked into Minas Tirith. I was worried Minas Tirith is pretty buff right now. And I thought it might be useful to have a few reinforcements before I, in case the combat goes poorly. Um, so I think I was a little reluctant without, Without the Southrons and Easterlings at war, it just felt a little premature to attack in Minas Tirith, and I didn't want to waste another card. So I played Monsters Roused, and now I'm sort of committing to go toward toward the Elves, but at the moment, at least, the Elves are not anywhere close to war. I can get a pretty big army in Trollshaws pretty fast, so that's my plan. Okay, we go to next round. I would be curious to know what people would have done instead. All right, my opponent... Um, Okay, draws obviously King Brand's Men is a great, great card to draw here. They declare in Dimrald Dale. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I discard Worm Tongue, and I'm obviously happy to see Ring Wraiths are abroad. Gives me a lot of flexibility. And now the Fellowship is out. So if I draw Tile Drawing cards, Nazgul Search, Nazgul Strike, Cruel Weather, any of these, I can I can use these to harass the Fellowship. Um, okay. I'm not allocating too much attention on the fellowship. Um, I mean, I've been putting a bunch of eyes in as it is. I, I've now drawn, rolled even more eyes. So I have three eyes in there again. Um, and I only got one muster. So now I can't get the Southrons and Easterlings to war. Now maybe I go my um, my plan for Rage of the Dunderlings. All right. So they start off by moving and I miss them again. And um, then I muster an elite in Angmar. Maybe that's overkill. Um, you know, I, I, I intend to move Angmar to Etmore's to Trollshaws and uh, Rage of the Dunlandings to get um, a, like a full, a full army of eight, uh, eight regulars and two elites into Trollshaws. Um, maybe overkill. And maybe this muster could have been used in Orthanc or just to get the Southrons and Easterlings to war. Um, I'm not sure. I could have also mustered in Moria, but um, I intend to be putting the elves to war. And I'm tempting fate a little bit with Dol Golder completely open. I didn't also want to leave Moria completely open. I don't think my opponent is going to go, you know, hard military attack. But if you leave Moria and Dol Golder completely open and the elves are at war, then you're sort of asking for trouble as Shadow. So I didn't, um, I, I would prefer to take this unit from Angmar uh, than the two regulars from uh, Moria. So... And I happen to roll a whole bunch of army movement. So I can bring this army from Mornon to Osgiliath. They can prepare my attack against Minas Tirith in case things go poorly. And then um, I can also get ready to attack the elves. I'm a little worried that my opponent could start mustering the elves close to war. But I think with these dice, I can get close enough to be able to put them under siege before they get to um, war too fast. I am thinking about 
the possibility of power too great. And if my opponent has that, then I'm prepared to get rid of dreadful sp spells and fighting or Akai. I obviously don't want to do that, um, but I, I can if, if necessary. All right, so I go ahead and play Rage of the Dunlindings here. I get six units in Holland, and then um, my opponent plays King Brand's Men, draws into Swords and Ariador. And what's interesting to me is they used a muster to do that. Um, you know, I... I don't know why aren't why not use the muster to muster into Dol Amroth. Gondor is at war right now. You could muster productively in Pelargir and Dol Amroth just to, you know, be prepared for this attack someday. And yeah, I don't I guess you want to save the Palantir for Axe and Bow or to hide with Strider. I, I might just move a second time here. Obviously, you don't really want to get hit, but you're doing okay on Corruption. You, you've been hit only once in your past Moria. So I would be inclined to move again here and then maybe use one of those dice to hide again with Strider's ability. Okay, so um, they, what did I do? I moved some armies. Yeah, I moved Angmar, and then I moved this army from da from Morn onto Daggerlad. And then they play Swords and Ariador to just cycle more cards. All right, so this is good. They got to, power too great. Um, elves are still far from war. I don't know. Maybe maybe you could get elves one away, one away from war if you use the Will of the West. If you're not going to move again, you use the Will of the West to muster once, and then um, the Palantir to um, get one away from war. And then if I attack Rivendell, you can muster in Woodland Realm. And if I attack Woodland Realm, you can muster in Rivendell. And this is also, this is kind of why I brought everything that I did to to um, to Trollshaws because I wanted to be able to take Rivendell even if it mustered a bit. I don't know. It's unlikely that Rivendell would muster, but this, this is sort of a, an example where it might be able to. And my um, and my old forest road army is certainly not too great, particularly if they get um, if they get Thrandall's archers. These northern units also that could have been potentially mustered the northern north to war, and that could have caused some trouble for me too. Um, okay, so I keep my armies moving. They um, let's see. Okay, they do move a second time. That makes sense. And then I hit them, uh, but don't reveal them. So. You know, I think my expected number of reveals at this point are much higher than zero. Um, but that's how it goes sometimes with the hunt. All right, they end up playing um, Axe and Bow. I wonder why not play a power too great here? It it stops this army. And um, yeah, I'm very happy to get to attack into Rivendell because now... Um, and I did attack Rivendell instead of Wooden Realm exactly because of a power too great. Um, I attack into Rivendell because now if they play a power too great, you know, it gets the elves close to war, but I can still besiege Woodland Realm. So, because power too great doesn't protect Woodland Realm. All right. They get Imrahil of Dolamroth. That's obviously great. What do they end up discarding? Let's see. So they discard Emerald of Delamroth. I, you know, I think that makes sense. But Wizard Staff feels like that combat effect is relatively weak. I would, I would prefer to keep Emerald of Delamroth um, in case I get a really weird roll and I don't get a bunch of musters and I can't muster into Delamroth. Like Delamroth could get under siege. It probably you're going to get at least a muster. But okay. Um, they don't declare the fellowship. It's a little interesting to me that they don't because um, it does give them flexibility. If they end up taking a random companion that's a hobbit, the hobbit could get a lot more places. But um, if I happen to have cruel weather, I could push them back into Moria. If I get the Balrog, something like that. Um, and there are a bunch of cards that I can only play if the fellowship is one or higher on the track, Cruel Weather, Nazgul Strike, Nazgul Search. So by declaring, you prevent Shadow from playing those. All right, but they didn't end up doing that. And um, there are some benefits, right? You, you can send people to the Companions to Woodland Realm or something like that, Airborne, to help defend it. Um, okay, so I again roll two extra eyes 
and um, a single muster, but that's fine. This is this is a good roll for me at this point. Um, ring wraiths are abroad are going to help me. Uh, fighting Urg High can help me. So that's that's perfectly fine for me. Um, they start off by moving, and I hit them. I get a three again. I don't manage to reveal them, and they get Gimli at random. And then I attack Minas Tirith because I want to play Ring Wraiths are Abroad, but I want to finish Minas Tirith first and then Ring Wraiths are Abroad to Rivendell or Woodland Realm, something like that. Um, I play Deadly Strife. Obviously, I'm not happy to see Daylight against Deadly Strife. That's a good play. You know, anytime your opponent plays uh, a strategy card or Shadow plays a strategy card, there's a chance it's Deadly Strife or Desperate Battle or Relentless Attack, any of those. So it makes sense, Devil, Devilry of Orthanc. Um, having Daylight for that can make a big difference. So uh, that's, a, that's a good play. Um, all right. I do get three hits, though, and they uh, get three against me. And I'm fine with that trade. They lose um, two regulars instead of... Uh, they lose an elite and a uh, regular instead of downgrading both elites and um a regular uh do we do that right did something go wrong here they took three yeah right they could they could have lost an elite and then downgraded another one but instead they lost an elite and a regular without downgrading their other elite and so they're only rolling three combat dice. And because of that, I um, I press and hope to dish out some extra damage. Um, I draw We Come to Kill a uh, Half Orcs and Goblin Men. I'm happy to see this because it lets me, it's going to give me some flexibility in um, Old Forest Road, particularly if they manage to draw Thranduils. Um, and also the North could get to war at any point. And um, I'm, I'm happy to see this card. I I play Great Host. It's a little risky because I have seven units. I didn't want to play Orcs Multiplying again because I didn't want to go too low with the Onslaught. And I like this for mustering in case Shadow starts, I mean, in case three people start to go military attack. This is a good, good defensive card. But um, maybe I'll get lucky with Great Host. Um, I get two hits which is enough, and then they get one hit plus one from the confusion. So um, I end up managing to trigger Great Host. I cannot press the attack, though, and um, we go on to the next round. So they draw a character card, um, or sorry, a strategy card, and now this is interesting. So they could, at this point, play Gua here, and this, by the way, is the benefit of keeping the fellowship um, not declared, right? They can play Guahir, go straight to Erebor, and um, then get dwarves to war with Book of Mazarbul. And I think if you have uh, dwarves to war also, then you can really potentially defend Woodland Realm. It'll be, uh, as it turns out, they, they can't really, um, because I have... Um, Ring Wraiths are abroad and orcs multi and uh, fighting Urukai plus half orcs uh, and goblin men. So so I could I could still take Woodland Realm, but it might be worth a try. Okay. Anyway, I finish Minas Tirith. I play Onslaught here um, on the first round of combat because I'm going to get to redraw a strategy card. And just in case it doesn't work, um, just in case I don't roll a six, I want to be able to take it out without spending another die. Okay. So. Um, I take out Pilar gear here because I don't want them mustering up more in Pilar gear. I get one hit, they get zero, and then they retreat into Lamadon. So this is interesting. Instead of moving the Fellowship here, they're at three movement. One, two, three. They're one, two, three movement away from Mordor. So if they move the fellow move with the Fellowship again here, they could hide with Strider's ability if I catch them. And then... Um, be only two steps away. And then next round, they're much more likely, I think, to make it in. Um, and also by playing Elven Rope, yeah, it's okay. I guess their plan is they're only going to move once this round. 
Um, I muster some Nazgul here. Again, maybe should have mustered um, Southrons and Easterlings toward war. I mustered Nazgul because I know that I'm going to play um, Ring Wraiths are abroad. And so I want to land on um, Rivendell and Woodland Realm. Um, let's see, what did they just do? They mustered the elves one towards war here. I don't know. Is that, is that worth it? I guess. Um, yeah, if I don't have ring rates or abroad, you can then, uh, yeah, sorry. You can then play power too great. And then at the start of next turn, muster, um, in wooden realm. Okay. So, so that, that does make a lot of sense. Um, I play ring wraiths are abroad here and I decide to, um, I decide to attack woodland realm because I don't want them mustering into woodland realm. And I think it's relatively low probability that they have, um, power to grape because I would have expected them to play them when I was in troll shaws when they had that palantir, but they didn't. So actually it was sort of a, a tricky thing because now I put the Witch King in Rivendell and that's going to be bothersome. So they um, play Power Too Great here um, and I am obviously sad. It would have been great to be able to take out Rivendell before Power Too Great hit the table. Um, and now I have a choice. Do I play Half Orcs and Goblin Men? Do I pl try and play Dreadful Spells or something like that? Um, or, or what? So or do I want to get rid of um, Power Too Great right now with Half-Orcs and Goblin Men? So I obviously like Fighting Urukai. It's very powerful, um, very efficient use of dice and lets me make an attack with the Palantir. Um, so I, I end up playing Half-Orcs and Goblin Men in this army. In case they draw into Thrandals or something like that, I want to have this more buff. And this army has to be enough after defeating Woodland Realm to still be able to take out Dale afterwards um, to get my a third victory point. So um, that's why I play it there. And I'm worried that I'm using up another army die, but I feel like I still have a, or, sorry, army card. I feel like I still have a good number of army cards remaining in the deck. And if necessary, I, I can use Fighting Urukai to get rid of Rivendell. Um, I know that um, the card that musters into Rivendell has already been played. Um, I can't remember the name of it. And so they, uh, I, I'm not really in a rush, particular rush to take out Rivendell if I don't draw an army card right away. All right, so we go to next round. Um, as it turns out, I did draw an army card, Hill Trolls. Um, and my opponent gets, uh, we prove the Swifter and Path the Woeses. So they have a lot of ways to get um, characters out of the fellowship. Um, all right. I allocate one and roll three more eyes again. And um, they get this great roll, particularly because the Southrons and Easterlings aren't at war. They're not even worried about Day Without Dawn. So, you know, they did not declare the fellowship again. I think they're still, you know, keeping their options open. They're one, two, three. They have one, two, three movements to be able to get to Mordor this round. They don't seem to be rushing to Mordor. So um, even though they could make it this round, but I don't know if you want to do that against four eyes. So they're sort of taking it slow. Okay, we note that I'm plus five um, on rolled eyes. And I say, you know, I don't mind too much as long as I hit you when I have four eyes. And then they move and then I miss them. <laughs> So, you know, there have been quite a few rounds where, um, you know, I miss, you know, it's not, it's, it's reasonable chances that you miss, you know, even, even with four eyes against the six, uh, when you're only rolling on a six, but, but there have been quite a few where that has happened. Um, okay. So I go ahead and, um, attack Woodland Realm here, um, I'm not sure why I focus on that first. I decide to save. I could have used Fighting Urkai either location. I decide to um, save it for Rivendell because I um, I feel like that's I have one fewer leadership, and um, there are just more units there. So I feel like I can probably have good chances of getting three hits um, pretty easily. 
So I just, I don't play any combat cards and I happen to roll two sixes. You know, you expect, you know, about one and a half. So it's not, it's not crazy to roll two sixes. Um, and they get one hit against me and then I uh, press and then I get another six and they miss. So this, this combat went well. Maybe it was a little bit overkill having this um, elite here, but um, it is useful to be able to take out Dale, I think. Okay, uh, they go ahead and separate Strider at this point, and they send him to Dol Amroth, and you know, I, there's no chance of me having Day Without Dawn. So, you know, the Fellowship was doing pretty well, um, and I think that makes sense. You know, one other option might have been to use either Guahir or we prove the Swifter here and with the Palantir die, and that way you could have moved again with the character die. I don't know that you want to move again, but at the moment, we're at four movement, one, two, three, four. We are two moves away from Mordor. If I move this round, then next round, I only have to move once. And then my chances of getting revealed into Mordor are a bit lower. So I don't know. Um, okay. I go ahead and get rid of uh, Power to Grape because I did happen to draw an army card. And um, then they get Strider. And I play Fighting Urukai in Rivendell. And um, I don't know exactly. I, I think I play. So I go ahead and play Devilry of Orthanc round one because it lets me cycle into more character cards. Dreadful Spells is okay, but I'm not particularly worried about any strongholds right now. And I like cycling into more character cards, particularly because, um, you know, the Fellowship is out and about. So if I have. Um, I haven't drawn any of the tile drawing cards. I haven't drawn Cruel Weather. I haven't drawn Nazgul Search, Nazgul Strike. And Strider now is no longer the guide. So if I get something like Nazgul Search, that can really slow down the Fellowship. Um, so I'm happy at this point to cycle a character card. And it's a useful combat effect too. Okay, so um, I miss completely. And then uh, they get one hit. And then we go to round two. I get two hits. Uh, they get one, and then I get one more, and then I go ahead and press to round four, and I miss completely, and then I press to round five, and I thought about playing Onslaught. Maybe I should have played Onslaught here. We're in round five. I don't have any more presses. Um, elves are at war, and, you know, I, I'm not super worried about a military attack for my opponent, but... Shadows on the Misty Mountain is just a great defense, Moria. Um, <coughs> so I th I think about I think I decide to save it. Um, I still have some chances of rolling two sixes here, um, but may maybe I should have played it. I don't know. I ended up not playing it, and I again roll no sixes. So that was five rounds of combat, and um, only managed to do four hits. I think that's quite unlikely. Um, and, um, you know, it cost me a die. It's not, it's not the end of the world, but, uh, kind of silly. All right. So they think about that. They want to take it back and then they decide to draw a character card first, I guess, in case they get heroic death or something like that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Good to draw character cards. And then I attack Rivendell again. And this time I played the Onslaught. I, I felt like I don't want to have to waste even more time. And at least this way I get to redraw a card. Also, I'm pissed at those orcs, so I want to kill them. Uh, I They miss again. Six rounds of combat. Still haven't managed to inflict enough hits. Um, my opponent uh, says, oops, I meant to play something. I don't know what they would have played. Uh, they don't really have much. I guess maybe Sudden Strike um, or Advantageous Position, but... There's nothing particularly useful here. Um, and then I kill off four orcs because I'm mad at them for being so bad at combat. And it is a little risky because uh, they 
I could only get one hit or maybe even zero hits. And then I have to deal with the mess of this combat here. And I only have one reinforcement card left in the deck um, that, that uh, you know, musters an orc in the field. So, but whatever, I'm like, those guys, you know, Witch King is there. He's definitely killing them off. <laughs> He's so mad at them for being so bad at combat. Uh, and But then I get enough hits and uh, Rivendell finally falls. So um, it ended up costing me an extra die. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to see many kings. That's fine. All right. And then my opponent musters instead of moving here. And now they're two moves away. You know, I did have four eyes. So, you know, that makes sense. And and these units in Lasarnach and Lamadon could, could cause trouble for me. So that's okay. Um I still wonder about like why not muster more into Dol Amroth. That's really the the place that could potentially cost you victory points. But all right, I uh, muster the South Rounds and Easterlings once. I'm worried that Gondor is going to muster up. Uh, Aragorn can come and attack into Pilar gear. I better be prepared to dump some more units into it. Um, so and maybe I'll draw Corsairs at some point. That would be nice. All right, my opponent has six dice now, and uh, it's always fitting when the king is revealed is drawn right after Aragorn shows up, so that's pleasant. I don't know that I'm actually going to play that card because there's not much going on in Mordor right now. Um, I am, you know, flirting a little bit with um, military victory uh, for the free people risks. If I get some horrible roll, they can march into Dol Guldur, they can march into Minus Morgul. Um you know, the chances of that with nine dice, I can probably react to it in some way. But, um, you know, I, I don't mind seeing King is revealed. The, the combat effect is good. And in case I get some crazy rule, I can at least defend minus more role from this, from this guy in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, my op- I allocate one eye. I, again, roll two more. And my opponent gets two movement. So, um, you know, this is the situation where if I had cruel weather, I could, you know, I could definitely stall them if they get revealed. Like there, th- this is, this is the risk of being two spaces away from mortar. There were a couple of times they could have moved a little bit more, but okay. I, um, okay. They start off by moving. I think that makes sense. And then I hit them. That was exciting. I rolled a six and, um, I reveal them. So they take one damage, they get rid of ax and bow, and now they're one away and revealed. And so we can see that they're going to have to hide with the will of the West and then use a ring for their last movement. If I had any character card that affected the fellowship, uh, like drawing a tile card, then I could play it and it would potentially be quite effective because there are now five tiles out of 12 that would reveal the fellowship and manage to stall them. Um, I don't have an easy way to cycle um, character cards with the Witch King. And so this is sort of um, an effect of power too great because I did have to discard, I think, the Palantir of Orthanc or some, you know, some character card, which otherwise I could use to cycle with the Witch King in upcoming battles. I don't know exactly where I'm going. Um, I think think maybe my plan is to attack Rohan, but, um, you know, I look and see that I can get one victory point in Dale and, you know, either Dole Amroth or Helm's Deep. Now my opponent happened to roll two army movements this round. And so I think that this is a great example of the benefits of getting Aragorn. Like it was pretty late to get Aragorn and, you know, maybe Strider would have been good to keep the fellowship moving faster. Um, but by having six dice, you're just, you're, you're defending Dol Amroth. You are, um, giving you more options. So the fact that there are two army movements here means that they're both going to be able to hide the fellowship, move the last time with the fellowship and get this army from Edoras into Helm's Deep in time before my army comes in from Orthanc. Now, I I don't know. This is another good um, pause the video moment. What would you do with this turn? This is minute 39. Um, What would you do as shadow here? You can see that the fellowship is, given what you have in your hand, the fellowship is likely going to get into Mordor. Maybe you cycle into something that stalls them, but the fellowship is very likely to get into Mordor this round they almost certainly won't be able to destroy the ring next round. So between this round and next round, 
you need to be able to destroy or, or get three more victory points. It seems to me that Dale is going to be one. So you need to either take out Helm's Deep or Dol Amroth. Um, what do you do? So I, perhaps unwisely, uh, decided to go for Helm's Deep. Um, my opponent properly gets their armies in place in Helm's Deep. I muster up more in Orthanc. My opponent hides the fellowship. I muster up even more in Orthanc. And then um, my opponent moves armies. That makes sense. And then I go ahead and move Nazgul here because I know that I don't have um, I don't have anything to stall the fellowship. So I might as well try and reveal them. I have good chances of um, hunting them. And then there are tons of tiles that reveal them. It'll get me two tiles. And while I don't really expect to corrupt the fellowship, I would like to reveal them. Um, and that'll slow them down because Strider isn't God anymore. So, and then, and then given my red tiles, there'll be a chance that, um, that I'll be able to, like, if they're revealed, I'll be able to play my red tiles and get them, uh, get them in before the fellowship moves. Okay. So I, um, move Nazgul. I leave several up here be because in Woodland Realm, because I anticipate attacking Dale, I put one on the fellowship just to mess with them. And, um, then my opponent draws a card. So Faramir's Rangers is funny because they could move this unit to Asgiliath and then potentially play Faramir's Rangers. That's, that's cool. At some point, that's a possibility. Um, and then I play Shelob's Lair here because I want to get it into the pool in case I don't reveal them and they move right away. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe that was wrong, but they um, muster Rohan towards war, which I think is a great play because now when I attack into Fords of Aizen, um, uh, Rohan will be at war. They'll be able to muster into Helm's Deep before I besiege it. So maybe this was misplayed and I could have um, and should have besieged Helm's Deep this round. Um, so yeah, maybe I didn't need to move Nazgul this round and I could have or yeah yeah that that was probably a minor mistake should have gotten helm's deep un, under siege without letting them muster at the start of next round okay i do like saving my last die here to do the attack because now if they have ents um they can't actually take out saruman so i save an extra die for next round um I get one hit, so I take out the unit in Fords of Eisen. Now Rohan is at war, and um, they go ahead and use their ring. I do successfully hit them, but I do not manage to reveal them. So, you know, that's with this hunt pool, that's quite, quite unlikely. And, um, you know, but still, it, it can happen. So they lose a random companion, they get rid of Pippin, and we go to next round. So, um, I don't particularly, I mean, these aren't great cards. Morgul Wounds, I don't think that I'm corrupting the Fellowship. I just want to take out Helm's Deep. That's really my plan. Um, so they, um, I allocate one eye, I roll zero extra eyes, and then they get this nice flexible roll. Um, they start by mustering into Helm's Deep. I besiege it. And then, um, and then they play Guahir to get Gandalf into um, Helm's Deep. Obviously, it would have been better for them if they had managed to draw an end card. And it's kind of crazy that they didn't ever draw an end card. Um, that's certainly unlucky because that would have made this battle very different because Gandalf cancels the Nazgul leadership and then the Ent could have taken out Saruman's leadership. Um, and I would have gone from having 10 leadership to zero leadership. So, um, yeah, that's just unlucky that they did not ever draw an Ent. Um, but now we see Wizard Staff and so that's cool. So they're going to get to use Wizard Staff in that, in that battle. Um, and now we look and we're like, well, yeah, maybe I should have, um, maybe I should have kept, uh, maybe I should have gone after, uh, Aragorn here. Um, 
I wouldn't have needed to muster quite as much, and I do have more units overall here. Um, I mean, this is 13 hit points, and I would have had 12 hit points in Dol Amroth. Um, I wouldn't have had to worry about Ents. So, I don't know. I was more worried about um, Aragorn as a companion in here, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was right. All right, now we have Gandalf in there. And my chances are, I don't know. It seems like possible I could do it. But, um, okay. So um, I play, I have so many Palantirs, I might as well get a Red Tile in there. And then maybe I can slow down the Fellowship. And maybe they won't even be able to destroy the ring in, th in, in two rounds. I mean, I think there's a decent chance that the Fellowship won't be able to destroy the ring in, in three rounds. Like the chances of them getting stopped or revealed um, are super high and they might, you know, make one or maybe two progress this round. Um, and, and I have three red tiles in there. So, all right. So they, they move armies here. I don't know exactly why that army movement is happening. I feel like, yeah, there are a lot of, other things I might have done. Why not start to muster in muster up Rohan in case something goes badly for Shadow here? You could muster in Rohan. Um, Path of the Woes is also you could do something crazy like you know come down to Las Arnach and then um, you know retake Minas Tirith. Maybe I don't know. Probably not retake Minas Tirith, but you could certainly mess with Shadow. Um, and I think that uh, you know. Hopefully you're just going to destroy the ring in two rounds. But if next round you get, you know, a whole bunch of musters and some army movement, then you want to be able to do something productive with it. Maybe just muster more in, in Dol Amroth and then, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's just one die. All right. I draw a card because, again, I don't have anything particularly um, useful that I can otherwise do with that Palantir. Um I'm happy to see Shadow lengthens. I don't feel like I have a good chance of corrupting the Fellowship. And so my plan is just to um, use a ring on this Palantir and get, get the mouth or, you know, yeah, probably get the mouth with this muster. And then I have basically three attacks to take out, um, to take out Helm's Deep and then one attack to take out Dale. That's that's my plan to be able to win this round. All right. So I start, uh, let's see, my opponent, boy, they move. Okay. And they get a one. So that is, um, other than the zero, that is the best tile. Um, I mean, the three or the two are probably also pretty similar at this, at this situation. But the fact that they're not revealed and not stopped is huge because now they get to make... Um, they, they, they get to just make more progress. So um, that, that was, I think, quite quite lucky step on Mordor. But, you know, that's how Mordor goes. And you got to try and take your chances. Um, okay, I attack Helm's Deep. And then uh, they play Cairden Ships. They, they, they correctly assess that I'm not attacking um, Dol Amroth. And so... Um, I play Desperate Battle. We forget for a moment to declare whether or not Gandalf is shining. We both sort of assumed that Gandalf is shining, but the proper sequence is I declare the attack against Helm's Deep, and then I wait for a moment, like 15 seconds or, you know, a while, give my opponent the chance to declare that they're using Gandalf. If they do not declare that they're using Gandalf, then we proceed assuming that they're not using Gandalf. So this is a change to the way that we have done it in previous years because Gandalf's shining ability is optional. You don't have to use it. And that's how we're playing the Witch King's card draw ability. That's how we're playing Worn with Sorrow and Toil. So we're just, we're just being consistent in the tournament that if there's an optional effect, you really have to declare it. Now, free people can, at the beginning of the game, say, please assume that any time Gandalf is in a battle and there's at least one Nazgul, that Gandalf is shining unless I say otherwise. You can totally say that at the beginning of the game, but you have to actually state it at the beginning of the game and it doesn't carry over from game to game. You just have to say it at the beginning of every game because otherwise, if you don't say anything, 
then we're going to play the cards as written. So um, we just pause for a moment here after I've rolled my combat roll and we say, hey, wait, is Gandalf shining, right? And it, it's particularly nice that it doesn't matter here because I have five leadership anyway. Um, and so I, I don't feel like this changed our combat cards or anything like that. That's fine. So, um, okay, so we discuss all that and we're like, yep, Gandalf is shining. Okay, fine. Um, and then um, even with Desperate Battle, uh, I get only one hit and my opponent gets three hits. So, you know, that's bad. Um, I do draw into Deadly Strife. I don't press. I'm like, okay, chances of now winning this combat, I would say very low. Um, but, you know, maybe. So I get the mouth and um, I attack Helm's Deep again. And I play my Dead Deadly Strife because, you know, I could get five hits. Um and the proper procedure. So what happened was I said Helm's Deep again, and then I selected my combat card immediately. That's not the right procedure. What I should do is say, I'm attacking Helm's Deep, and then I pause. And then my opponent has to say, Gandalf is shining. Um, typically, probably the best thing to do is at the start of each game, just say, like, assume that Gandalf is shining against one or more Nazgul. But we're not sort of in the habit of saying that yet. Everybody should get in the habit of saying that. Okay. Um, so... Um, I pause and wait and I deselect my card and I'm like, I'm attacking Helm's Deep. And then we wait and I say, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Do you want to do anything? And then, um, my opponent says, yeah, Gandalf is shining. I'm like, great. That's what I thought. Um, I could have just asked them, but if Shadow has to ask, then it sort of reveals the fact that they have a character card that they're thinking about playing that might depend on Nazgul. Now it's round one. It didn't actually matter. I, like, obviously, I'm not playing back Black Breath here. Uh, I mean, maybe not obviously, but I'm not playing Black Breath here. Um, so I just, um, I just wait. And I would have, I would have eventually said, Are, is Gandalf shining? But um, we do it actually the right way. And now I choose my combat card again. And then um, I play Deadly Strife. They play Daring Defiance. So you can't play Daring Defiance if Gandalf is shining, uh, which is the whole reason why it's good that we're very clear about whether or not Gandalf is shining. Um, you can't play Daring Defiance. Uh, sorry. Um, technically, you can play Daring Defiance because a companion is in the battle. But the effect of this card would not apply because... Um, you can't forfeit the leadership of all companions participating in the battle because you've already forfeited Gandalf's leadership. So I believe it's technically legal to play this card, but it would have no effect because Gandalf is already, um, is already, uh, has already forfeited his leadership. Now there could be some weird cases where you'd want to do this anyway. Like if you thought I played swarm of bats, then swarm of bats, um, will actually cancel Daring Defiance. And then um, I won't get the leadership bonus. So it is theoretically illegal to do this. Um, I said, and, and this was a mistake in the game log, I said that it was illegal. And I think I'm wrong about that. I think it is technically legal. But we, the point is, it would not have an effect because Gandalf has already forfeited his leadership. So we just took it back. Um, and my opponent um, played... We, we talked, well, should, should they get to play a card or not? And, um, they, they said, we, we decided to let them play, um, serve in a secret fire. So, you know, technically it's a tournament game that, you know, we shouldn't have, that, that shouldn't have been taken back or, you know, I will go alone should stay. Um, but, uh, we took it back. So in terms of the actual play, even if it was legal to play it, I think that um, I will go alone is super powerful. Uh, sorry, sorry. I was thinking this was uh, never mind. Uh, that totally makes sense to play it uh, if it was legal. Um, I was thinking this was there's another way, but uh, obviously it's a different card. Um, when you see it, when you see a strategy card, I also think maybe advantageous position, right? Like it could have hurt me a little bit. Anyway, um, deadly strife. Here we go. Um, I roll and get uh, two hits total. And that is below average, right? You'd expect three and three quarters, something like that with full leadership. So it's around four is what you'd expect. I got two uh, and my opponent gets five. So, you know, this combat in Helm's Deep has gone horribly. I played 
uh, Desperate Battle and Deadly Strife and got a total of three hits um, with full leadership and my opponent got eight hits. So that is bad and I'm not going to win. I'm not going to be able to get to 10 victory points this round. So, you know, I just have to hope that next round they're not going to roll enough character movement. Um, So, okay, so they move again and then they get another... Um, non-reveal tile. So the fact that they managed to move twice without getting revealed um, is huge, right? This is just this is just amazing to have been able to get three movement um, in Mordor with this pool. I mean, so many of the things would have revealed them. Um, so that's that's obviously very good, very good luck in. Mordor, I don't know about the combat luck. I think the combat luck was relatively average. I mean, obviously it was bad for me, but I still think it was relatively unlikely that I would be able to take out Helm's Deep, even with Deadly Strife and Desperate Battle. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the odds are of that. Okay, so I start to muster up an Orthanc again, and then they use a ring to move a third time, which is definitely correct. Um, there are enough red tiles in the pool that um, there's a you know a decent chance they're going to hit them, so good to keep moving along. And I get an eye here that does three damage, and we confirm that they can you know use um, Mary's guide ability after uh, Boromir is taken as a casualty, and so uh, Mary separates, and now they're down to Gollum. So they are now only two steps away. They're revealed, and um, my chances of winning are certainly not great. They have to either roll very low character movement um, next round, or they have to hit a red tile. And even if they hit a red tile, I, it still might not be enough. So it's not great. I I get um, Grand. Obviously, that's good. And... Um, I allocate one eye, roll one more, and I get this this crazy roll of um, just two attacks. Um, it's probably enough because I can muster up in um, Orthanc. I can play Shadow Lengthens to get these army units to um, Helm's Deep. I have a ring, so it's I have the mouth, so it's it's probably still okay. Um, and then they rolled uh, five movement. So that is bad right now, even if, even if they had hit a red tile, it still might not be enough. So, um, yeah, that's, that's bad news for me. And this is the situation where like, if they were a little higher on corruption, then maybe red tiles become more dangerous. I I didn't play Morgul wound last round because I thought, you know, it's not even enough to corrupt them. Uh, they need to just hit a red tile. That's my only hope at this point um, to stop them. Or a really bad roll. But obviously that's a great roll for um, for free people. All right, so they start by hiding. And then I muster more in Isengard. And then they try and move. And then they hit an eye. So this gives me some hope. But not really that much hope. Because they still have enough movement to destroy the ring. Um, it's only two damage. Um, I decide to... Uh, play uh, Morgul Wound here because I have enough Palantir dice to do what I need to do anyway to be able to get my 10 victory points. And at least this way, some of the eye tiles will now become more dangerous. Um, So that's what we do. And then um, they, I muster more into Orthanc and then they move again. And at this point, any eye... Uh, wins me the game, but they have to try and, um, and they get a one. So, you know, that's great. They are now, uh, in good shape to be able to potentially destroy the ring this round. And they think for a while, do they want to reveal or not? And they decide to reveal. They say, I don't think I can, I can get to 10 victory points. Um, I know that I can get to 10 victory points, but, um, they decide to reveal, you know, maybe I have Isildur's Bane. I've literally drawn none of the... I, the only thing I've drawn was Mor- uh, Morgul Wound. I haven't drawn um, any of the tile drawing cards. Um, so, you know, now eyes will do four damage. Um, if they draw an eye, they're, they they lose. But e- either way, they have to destroy the ring this round or else 
um, I get 10 victory points. So um, I decide to use my ring to muster in Orthanc just to be as sure as I can that I can take out Helm's Deep. I have Grand. Um, I have two Swarm of Bats. I have Great Host. Like, it seems very likely I should be able to take it, even against something like Heroic Death. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think there's much to say about that. I mean, I wanted to make it seem like maybe I couldn't get to 10 victory points. Um, so I draw another card here just to slow play it. And then, um, I attack into Dale and I managed to take Dale and then um, they properly pass again, just to see what happens. And then I have to play Shadow Lengthens now. So Shadow Lengthens shows up and now they're like, oh, if you have Grand, um, you will be able to make the attack or, you know, which King commands or something like that. And I used my last ring um, earlier and I just used a um, army die I used an army die to do to play that card so that I had a Palantir left and there would be some doubt in their mind. Maybe they wouldn't try and destroy the ring here um, because uh, this is the hunt pool and any of these eyes um, would lose you the game. So if they think that I don't have Grand um, or uh, which King commands, then it could make sense to wait. Um but obviously I wouldn't have set things up this way and used my last ring on a muster and like all those things. So they properly deduce that I do have some way to attack and therefore they move the fellowship and um, they use their last ring and they uh, draw two, draw two. So the hunt pool at that point was um, six tiles for them would win the game and uh, five tiles for me would win the game. So it's pretty close to 50, 50 slightly in their favor. Um, and you know, they hit one red tile, but they still managed to destroy the ring because they had enough movement for the fellowship and corruption just wasn't that high. Um, so I don't know exactly what I could have done better. Obviously Mordor was, the red tile wasn't wasn't good for them, but these first steps um, up Mordor were just really nice. Uh, the fact that they didn't get revealed any of those times and that they moved twice um, from step three to step four and step four to step five without hitting without hitting any of the tiles again that would that would win the game. So I think overall they got relatively lucky in Mordor. I don't know exactly how lucky. Um, I think that I got slightly unlucky in Helm's Deep. I don't know that it was super unlucky in Helm's Deep last round. And maybe it was my mistake to not go after Dol Amroth with all these armies here. I could have, instead of mustering up an Orthanc last round, I could have mustered um, the Southrons and Easterlings to war and then gotten a whole big army besieging Dol Amroth. Um, so, I, and I never did draw Corsairs of Umbar. Um, so, all right, let's look at the statistics. Um so these are correct. Um, I don't know why sometimes in replays it gets reversed, but this is correct. I was um, minus six on sixes, which is obviously not great, and plus four on eyes, which is obviously not great. Um, so they were, to be fair, also minus two on fives and minus five on sixes. So in general, the combat for this game was uh, quite friendly and... Um, it is fair to, uh, my opponent did note that, you know, in general, it's much better for free people if combat is very slow, because in general, Shadow is happy to trade one for one. I, I would much rather I was at plus plus six on sixes and they were at, you know, plus six on sixes. That that would be better for me. Um, so... So yeah, that's the game. We, we so I'm now one and one in the tournament. I my goal is obviously to uh, try and make it to the top cut. We'll see what happens. Um, I have uh, six more games to play. If I go 
five and one in the next six games, then I'll, I'll be likely to make the top cut. And uh, if I go four and two in the next uh, five game, six games, then I'll have a chance of making the top cut, but it'll obviously depend on some tie breaks. So um, thanks for watching. I particularly welcome your comments on um, the two things that I called out. What you, what, what um, would you have done? But uh, have a good rest of the day. Thanks so much.